Shane's Rib Shack, Basketball in Focus, Thursday. Got the court report going on, a lot of basketball going on this week out at Northwest back on Monday where East Forsyth beat, North, beat Northwest 75-74. Tight game going on there down the wire. That was one good one. This saw another one on uh, Tuesday night over at Western Gopher where North Forsyth knocked off Western Gopher 63-62. Then you uh, turn it around, go to Page last night, that Page girls game, Southern Alamance and Page. Page beat the Southern Alamance 62-60. And uh, saw a very good girls game back on Tuesday also over at Dudley when Southern Alamance beat Dudley's girls 51-39. Just a lot of great basketball going on now. Going to talk about uh, New Garden Friends School tonight. Dave Secor with us, the head coach of the Bears at uh, New Garden Friends School located on Pleasant Ridge Road. Great place to go. Was out there a couple of years ago. I think it might have been when they had their grand opening. They played a couple of new, a couple of games in that new gym already, but it was out there a couple of years ago when they were playing Greensboro Day. And just a great atmosphere inside the Bears' den there at uh, New Garden Friends School day. It is. Uh, it's a great place to play. It's a great school to be at for the kids and uh, we're, we're real proud of the uh, program we're putting together and uh, the group of kids that we've got. Come a long way in a couple of years too. Come a long way pretty fast because this school used to actually be located on the Guilford College campus on the back side of Guilford College over on New Garden Road and wasn't a lot of space over there, so I guess they decided we're going to move the upper school to Pleasant Ridge Road. There was a school there briefly for a short period of time. A lady had a school there, a private school, and then uh, I guess opened the door maybe when they were closing and moving out. New Garden moved in and turned out to be a good move. A little bit further away from Guilford College, but to have the space and have that nice home base you've got now, it fits real good. It, it does, uh, and the uh, the elementary school remains uh, on the Guilford campus, and uh, the opportunity for the high school uh, was, uh, was just great for us. It was good for uh, for New Garden and, and uh, the opportunity to expand w was terrific. We, um, we and again you're right, uh, in just a few short years come quite a ways. Uh, originally we were playing our varsity basketball games in the uh, church gym over at St. Paul's Church. They were uh, nice enough to give us some gym space over there and uh, we moved from there into our new facility and you were at, at that first game with Greensboro Day. On, uh, that, that, that was the opening game. Tanaya, Obi Raku Jr. That day, Kanaya just had, he must have had 45 points. He that had a wonderful game that day uh, against the mighty good Greensboro Day team. And, you would uh, think maybe coming in, I came in, I'm watching the scoreboard, I'm watching Greensboro Day, I'm saying, are they uh, playing JVs? Are they playing some backups? <laughs> They're playing the regular guys. You were right there with them that day. It was a great game for us. Uh, it was a it was a good uh, good opportunity for us to you know to play a quality team on a big stage. And uh, our kids stepped up and they played very well. And, it's it's uh, been a good stage out there for you, too, inside that gym. I mean, you've had some success at this year. I think you're 14 and six. Yeah, we are. Speaks pretty well for that record. Yeah, uh, and we've got a couple of wins over some pretty good schools. Uh, we end up playing uh, uh, a lot of times. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'll play anybody that'll play us. Uh, we'd play uh, Duke next week if they'd come in and play us. But uh, we love to play the best teams that we can schedule because uh, we feel like that's how you get your kids uh, better. Uh, that's how you develop. And uh, so we we end up with uh, some prep schools that come in, and uh, every now and again a post grad school that we play, uh, but just the opportunity to, to get up against the best kids that we can uh, gives our kids a chance to grow and to uh, and to get better. And, and speaking and about that, coming up, I guess, in about a week, I guess it is a week from tonight, February 13th, uh, you've got Wesleyan, the Wesleyan correct. Trojans coming in, Wesleyan Christian Academy from High Point, coached by Keith Gatlin, that, yep. uh, the home base team for Theo Pinson coming to your place. That is correct, uh, and we're looking forward to that, uh, our kids are looking forward to it, and uh, you know, they know each other, they play pickup ball together. Together during the during the off season, uh, and I guess during the season too, some uh, they're all friends. They all wanted an opportunity to play each other uh, all, all during the regular season, and uh, I got in touch with Coach uh, Gatlin, and uh, he thought it was a good idea, and so we set it up, and uh, it's going to happen. Uh, originally, it was going to be in their gym. They've got some activities over there now, so it's been switched. It's going to be played in our gym this year. Going to be looking for that, and probably send us a, maybe another little small mini press release on that, so we can certainly will at the website. Site, just pump that up and hopefully be a sellout for you. Yeah, I would like to think so. Yep. Yeah, I'd love to get out to New Garden Friends School. Been out there several times the past couple of years, enjoying it out there, watching you guys play. And again, a great atmosphere, good place to play some basketball. And you've got some talent out there, too. Introduce the guys that we're going to be talking to a little bit later uh, tonight. Who are some of the guys? Okay, uh, well, first of all, be Kanai Obi Rapu Jr. Uh, Kanai has been with us uh, since his sophomore year and uh, an outstanding basketball player, all, uh, all uh, news and records 
uh, all county team the last two years, and uh, he averages around 26 points and uh, nine assists a game. Gives us a, an excellent floor game. Uh, he's in the top five in the state in uh, in scoring and in three point goals and in assists. He's uh, he's a remarkable ball player, good team player, uh, good floor leader, and uh, you know certainly is going to be a prize for uh, for whoever picks him up for uh, college ball. Uh, and after him is Akena Smart. Uh, Akena is uh, has been with us now for a little over a year, and uh, Akena is averaging a double double on rebounds and points, 13 points, 13 rebounds a game. He's wow. had several uh, games where he's uh, picked up over 20 rebounds. Uh, he's a dominating force uh, for on defense uh, around the basket. He's got some excellent offensive moves, and uh, he, he plays plays with a lot of heart, big motor, and uh, he goes really hard. Give you a lot of time this year too. Last year you used to come to some of your games. I had to watch Akena sit because he'd been hurt. For a while. He had. Now he's giving you good time. Correct. Uh, we've had him. We had him every game this year. And uh, yeah, he was last year. He had a had a, a back injury that uh, had to be dealt with. And uh, but that's fine. And he's uh, he's good to go. And uh, given like you said, he's given us some uh, excellent excellent minutes. Uh, and last of all, Kane Ma. Kane is uh, the first year at New Garden, but he's a senior this year. And uh, he he's our point guard. And uh, he is the guy that we've been looking for to uh, run the point, uh, to step in and uh, get Kanai a little bit off the ball, give Kanao a chance to operate off the wing, and it's worked out excellent for us this year. Kane's done a, a really good job of picking up our offense and, and uh, learning how to find the open guys on the court, moving the ball and, uh, and breaking double teams. He's done a really good job with that. Um, That's a tough again, assignment, too. I don't care what anybody says. Being the point guard running the team, being like the quarterback, the leader of the basketball team of the ball club, that's a, that's a tough one. It, ab it absolutely is. It's not uh, it, it's not for the for the weak or, or the faint of heart. Uh, yeah, because you've got to have, sure. a, you gotta have that, uh, they talk about that quick memory. you can't, you got memory loss. you got to boom, boom, boom. you got to forget it pretty quick. But that's for sure. Uh, you got to, uh, you, you know, you got to put every play behind you and move on to the next one, and you've got to, you got to remember uh, what works. you got to, you got to know your players. you got to know your teammates, and you got to trust them. And uh, part of that, the communication uh, has been excellent between Kane and between uh, Kanayo and Akena. They do a, they do a remarkable job of, uh, of knowing where each is going to be on the court, finding each other, and uh, getting the ball to each other. So uh, we've been very impressed. Uh, the thing about them, uh, the best thing about that team, Andy, is, uh, is the way they play defense. They go after uh, the opponents. Hear, yeah. uh, and we, we've traditionally been a man-to-man -man team. Uh, we play help defense. Uh, this You're year, zone to give the guys a we, rest. Actually, this year we have for the first time. We've actually played a little bit of zone, and uh, they've played it really well. Uh, they We attack on the perimeter, and uh, Jordi Uzakena and his brother Osi down low, and uh, it works out real good for us. How did you find all these guys? That's the big question. They how found all, us. How did all these guys come <laughs> together to be a unit uh, this New Garden Friends School basketball team? How did you get all these guys at the same place and the same team on the same floor at the same time? Well, it, it, it's a remarkable thing, but they find us. Uh, that That is exactly the way it, it works out. Uh, we've, we've been very fortunate that uh, they have sought us out uh, as a place they wanted to come to school. Um, we, we absolutely uh, require that anybody who comes to school comes with the understanding Understanding that they're going to be part of the school community, they're going to be participants in whatever the student body does, and um, these these kids, all of them, are, are they're good artists, uh, they're musicians, they're singers, uh, they participate in uh, debate. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I have two that are going to a leadership conference uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, so th these guys, uh, they are they are you know really really good students, good parts of the community, and the fact that they're good basketball players is a bonus for uh, for all. So there are definitely requirements and expectations that have to be met. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they are, they you know, they keep the same. They have to keep. Actually, we require basketball players to keep a little bit higher grade level and grade average uh, than even the rest of the student body. And if if somebody is not making the grade or if they're late on their work, they uh, they have to sit until they get it ready and get it done. So uh, and they get no favoritism from that standpoint. How does the uh, factor look as far as for you guys turning out players that go? to either attend college or play basketball in college. How does that look and how does that work for you? Well, out of the, uh, interestingly enough, going back uh, the last several years, um, we have uh, we have several kids that are in college. As a matter of fact, my two sons, uh, I have one. Uh, they both play ball for me. One of 
Holcomb is now a junior at UNCG. The other is a sophomore uh, Dean's List student at NC State. Wow. Uh, and uh, we had uh, Kimon Ingram, who was uh, on our Kimon first team. Love. Good kid. He's good at Methodist kid. University yeah, now. Yeah, still playing. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, and good, uh, and good doing, doing yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mason Wyrick, who was with us Remember last Mason year, last year too, uh, yeah. is on the team at UNC Charlotte this He's year. He's on the team at UNC He is, in fact. I remember hearing and, uh, about that. That is pretty impressive. And, and, uh, and, if you're uh, on the team at UNC uh, at Charlotte, UNC Charlotte, that's pretty big. That's yep. high level basketball. It, it is correct. Yeah. Uh, they've uh, and so and the he kids. Had, I guarantee you, that kid probably he was a good ball player. But I'm sure he had to work his tail off to get on that team. Too. He said he did. Yeah, <laughs> he said yeah. he did. He, uh, he he said he worked real hard to uh, to impressive. get himself on there. But it, it speaks well for us. And and uh, as you're talking to these guys, they, they can tell you uh, the schools that are interested in them and have, have offered them and uh, some of their thoughts about where they uh, where they're going to want to go. I know they're looking forward to getting to the next level. All three of the young they men are. you brought in the evening are seniors. They'll be moving on before too long. They will. Uh, and I have no doubt they'll all do very well uh, at, at whatever they attempt in the future. They're going to be they're going to be really good. Yeah, we talked about that schedule. They're going to be playing the good teams like uh, Theo Pinson and Wesson. You should get some TV coverage out of that, too. You that would be wonderful man, if we could. I right would man. love to see somebody in there that, yeah, uh, that would do night. that. Yeah, not too much college ball usually going on. Usually there's not too much high school ball going on Thursday night. That's the way the schedule's been lately, though. It's been a busy Typically. couple of weeks while these makeup games. Well, it has. That, uh, yeah. that, uh, we ran into that at a game that uh, they, were, they were scrambling to get referees because they were trying to cover so many games one night. We, uh, Andy, just uh, just as a quick uh, piece, too, about our team. We travel. We were in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania right before Christmas and uh, played a tournament up there. And uh, we, we won the two games that we played uh, against Friends Central, a uh, big powerhouse team up in Pennsylvania, and also Germantown Friends. And then right after Christmas in Asheville, in the uh, tournament, the Wells Fargo tournament that they have down there, uh, we made it to the finals. We uh, we won against North Cross from uh, up in Roanoke and uh, against the Cannon School, and uh, lost to New Hope Christian in the uh, championship game. That's kind there. of interesting too, because you mentioned uh, <coughs> the, was it North Cross out of Roanoke? That's uh -huh. a public school. We beat those guys. Yeah. And then you played uh, the Cannon School, who's got the kid, uh, the Eddie kid, up at uh, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, believe me, they're good. Yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. a good ball team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in the finals, you played New Hope Christian. Is that the same New Hope out of Thomasville? Uh, it is. And, and you guys uh, have met during the regular season. Here you go up to the tournament, meet, meet it, together again on the we've, road. We've got some good history with New yeah. Hope. Uh, we actually, at Myrtle Beach last year in the uh, National Prep Championships, we beat them in the uh, final game down there. Wow. That's and, um, and, they, and That's good for both schools. Oh, it is. And uh, they got us uh, They got us here uh, by one point on our home court, and then they got us down in Asheville by six. Wow. And yeah, you got but we got them coming back in another I couple weeks. coming up yeah. about the 19th of so, February. Yeah, so uh, our guys are looking forward to that. Uh, they got a lot of friends on that team, and oh, yeah. uh, and again, uh, it's, it's the kid impressed me on that team. team. And I guess it's just because I see his name and I've seen his name with other athletes. The kid impressed me with the new hope is Ryan Johnson. Oh yeah, I see that good. game listed. Ryan Johnson's name's always in. He's there. very yeah. good. He is. He is. A, he is a ball player, and uh, he, you know, he's one of those guys that's difficult to defend. And, and no matter what you do, he finds a way to score. Yeah. We always see Kaniah's name in your listings of the post game work from LA Logan, who writes up a lot of your post game yes. articles for us. And mm -hmm. uh, we see Kanai's name in there, Kenna's name in there, Kane's name in there quite a bit as yep. well. And who else on this team this year? Uh, you mentioned uh, Sterling Holland has yeah, uh, stepped up and played very well yeah, for us. Yeah. Uh, the kid it, from Ragsdale. Yes, he has. Uh, and and uh, Sterling, uh, he's a junior this year, so he'll be back next year. He has. Uh, he's he's really learning uh, a How whole lot about he? what we do. Uh, six, two, three. Gotcha. Uh, a good wing player. Uh, very good at attacking the basket. He goes really hard, and, and uh, he's got he's got some really good balance and hops and uh, he can you know he can hang in the air and adjust his shot uh, he's got a good outside shot and you mentioned and Akina's brother too Akina's brother Osi uh, is uh, brand new uh, this year he's uh, he's in his sophomore year and uh, he's uh, as Akina told me he's the smaller he's only 6'8 <laughs> but he's how tall uh, is Akina before uh, he stands 6'10 6 6 foot 10 and, and, uh, and, but Osi is uh, Osi has a great set of hands uh, he's a good rebounder and uh, is picking up some good offensive moves. I think he's going to be an excellent ball player for us. You got a good uh, base, a good foundation of talent there. We have uh, we have another uh, guard, uh, Jake Holland, uh, who uh, uh, is has uh, not Jake. I'm sorry, uh, Jake Honeycutt, who has done a good job for us, uh, uh, filling in for Kane, uh, handling the ball, reading the defenses, and uh, playing and playing good defense when uh, when we're on the other end. That's good.
that's a solid club you've got. What about uh, some of these other teams you've got, kind of elite prep? You played them already and beat them. We have. Uh, we did. We beat them uh, about a week ago, and uh, we'll have them coming back. Uh, the game is originally going to be the 28th, now it's going to be the 25th, but they'll be in our gym again. Uh, they're an excellent team uh, with a couple, a couple of kids uh, already committed uh, to, uh, to college, um, which is the same uh, with uh, Prominence Academy out of the Raleigh-Durham area. I've uh, played them a couple of times this year, and uh, we beat them over here. And they have uh, they have two kids, one going to St. Joe's, uh, Markel Lodge, and uh, another kid that's uh, going to be going to Liberty next year. Uh, they're an excellent team, athletic. Um, a lot of a lot of the schools uh, on the prep level, uh, they are going to have an emphasis on good good height and good athleticism, and guys that really like to slash and go to the basket. That's uh, that's what we play against those guys. What about this next team you're playing soon on the 11th? I know you got a game. You got a game before then? Uh, we do. We have a game tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Uh, Right, yeah, right, right. and that's going to be against uh, Bull City Prep, that's which is a team out of Durham. Uh, Max Prep listing kind of yeah. had a little uh, shaded and had the Bull City Prep. You played them in that tournament earlier too, right? Or yeah, they uh, yeah. they are uh, they are a uh, prep school out of out of the Durham area. Uh, again, a very athletic team uh, with again with wing players that love to slash and go to the basket. That's, that's the story, like, like you do. say, of the big guys. And, uh, how did this Nigerian pipeline come come into Guilford? I, I wrote about that on the website maybe last year before mm -hmm. about that Nigerian pipeline. Pipeline. You got the Michael Abacha. You've got uh, Chuck Arboto out of High Point Christian Academy. Uh, you've got your guys, Mr. Smart. You've got just a number of players. That's there are may, some. May, may not all be from Nigeria, but just a ton of guys who come in and uh, foreign background. But again, maybe some have grown up in the U.S., but parents came from the foreign background. Yeah, and and this entire area is uh, is absolutely blessed with uh, basketball talent, with uh, outstanding ball players. I tell you another kid. Uh, He's got to be in that same pipeline too. You may know more about this than I do, because I'm just going to put it out because I'm not sure exactly. But Peter Ogba over at Greensboro Day, yeah. mm -hmm. he must be in that same area. He, yeah, and uh, he is apparently has developed real well this year. Uh, his his uh, first year over, and, and uh, from all I've read and seen, and I saw him early in a uh, in a jamboree, uh, and he he is he's gonna he's very good, gonna be much they better. They picked too. up another guy too. We might have to find other ways. I don't think they picked him up looking for him, but he found them. Like you say, so many times in private schools, the, the kids look around, they want to find the right fit, the right place to play. You got this guy Paul Sprick from Germany. Of a German exchange student. Yeah, I'm not familiar with him except by his name. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. yeah but I uh, understand he's uh, also there. Uh, there's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, wealth of talent in That's this amazing. area. Uh, great high school basketball place to, uh, to be around. And, and uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the folks that attend the high school basketball games around here are not necessarily affiliated with the schools. They just simply enjoy good basketball. Oh, yeah, they hear about and a certain player, a certain team, they go watch. They, they want to come see run, it. Roll along, uh, winning streak and exactly what's going on like Greensboro Day. I'm sure it's probably attracted a lot of fans over the years. People are just curious. Oh, for sure. See what this because they're ranked 38th in the country now. Yep. It's pretty crazy. Yep. They uh, crazy. they have had a remarkably good season this year. And uh, gosh, they had that run last week and they went down to Florida uh, against uh, that Orlando Christian Prep, beat them in the semis and lost. Got beat pretty badly by the Verde team, but that team's ranked number three in the entire nation. Yes, they're they're very good and I, and I think that uh, a lot of the local folks down there thought that the uh, that the uh, other team, uh, the, the Orlando Christian, was going to be in the finals, and Greensboro Day did take them out. That was, uh, that was another kid that should have been at that tournament. I don't know the people who maybe listen to this in detail later, maybe live, maybe not now catch, maybe listen back on our delayed tape version or tape version or on uh, YouTube. But this kid, Damon Harge, is like a five yeah. foot eight kid, a super phenom kid. He moved from the West Coast, was playing for some team down around uh, uh, Cameron or somewhere down the East, eastern part of the state. But now he's down in Florida, Orlando Christian. We played against him a couple years ago, yeah, actually. Yeah. He was the team came in, yeah. The team uh, that the Prominence Academy team uh, yeah. used to be located out of Creedmoor, and he Creedmore, was, that's he was with them for yes, a year. Sir. So you said, uh, yeah, we did. And uh, well, he, he probably was back seventh or eighth grade back he then. He was, I think, he was seventh grade at that yeah, time, yeah. and he was uh, he was quite uh, quite handy Is with the basketball. Is he all that he's made up to be? Well, it, you know, we didn't get to see him a lot. They did, right. they played him a short amount of time. He could handle the ball very well, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, he could get a shot off, and and he could penetrate. Um, and I, I'd love to see him again. I uh, guess if really he doesn't. Uh, burn out before he gets to be 18 years old. He's done this stuff so early. Maybe he could turn out to be a very good player one day. Yeah, I think he could. Doesn't mind he moving, could. does he? Because he was no, in he, California, moved to the North Carolina, then on down to Florida. He's been around. He surely has. And uh, I guess looking for looking for the right fit, looking for the right place. Yeah. Andy, if I could, I want to go back too. I, it's on my mind. I, when we were talking about our kids coming back next year, uh, I've got uh, I got a couple more that I wanted to mention. Uh, Kingsley Nazekwe, uh, who is an outstanding soccer player, oh, and I have to share him. Years, with so 
Oscar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kingsley. Kingsley is an outstanding player, good rebounder, great heart, great motor, and he'll be back next year. He missed and, this uh, year, right? He he has played uh, second half of the season. He okay. was working on soccer first half. Back we get And uh, he's playing now, and good, um, good. and it's great bonus for us to have him out there. And is he and, the spell of me? The first one of the last name is an I, right? Uh, or is it an E? I'm no, it's an E. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. But Ezekwe. No, gotcha. Ezekwe, huh? Uh -huh. And uh, Josh Wilkerson, uh, who is a junior on our team, is uh, is also he's a, he's a wonderful defender. Uh, he's a kid that goes really hard all the time. He rebounds well and uh, plays plays extremely well around the basket. And uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of credit Absolutely. to those guys too, and make sure that we got their names out. I got a lot of freshmen and sophomores that are going to be coming up, and uh, you'll be hearing about them uh, as the time goes. But uh, right now we got uh, I think we got a real good solid team, and, and looking at uh, next year, we're excited about the kids. And that, that are JV team's in pretty good shape too. Then yeah, uh, actually we did play a a type of a JV team uh, when the Australian teams were in town. We played a ninth and tenth grade game, and uh, our ninth and tenth graders uh, won pretty handily against uh, against that Australian team. They played very well that day. So yeah, we got we got a lot of kids in that group that are that are going to show up, uh, and I only expect them to get better as time goes. And yeah, we talked about that New Hope Christian team with uh, the Ryan Johnson kid. They got the uh, Jaquan McCauley kid who came over from Southern Guilford. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty tough unit too, isn't it? They're very good, uh, very good, very talented. They shoot the ball very well, uh, and of course they run the court so well. And uh, that the, what you find with a lot of the teams, uh, especially teams that we end up playing, are that they are they are up and down the court, and uh, they really like to get out and run. And, and uh, of course we do too, but uh, it's it you know it makes for an interesting and exciting type of basketball game because um, nobody's holding anything back. They're, it you seems know, going like at it's each going other that way in basketball. High school basketball is going, you know, going toward that trend, the transition up and down the court. In a hurry. It's a discussion that we have internally a lot when when fans come to a ball game they they want to see kids play basketball mm -hmm. and when kids play basketball they want to play basketball they want to get out and run they want to shoot and uh, so you know we we feel like that's uh, that's what people want to see we feel like uh, and that's the way you develop your kids give and them that's a chance you hope to play the officials to kind of let them play because they're the ones that can stop yes them they can too tight of a game yes they can and uh, and I'll say this uh, the games that that we've played and the officials that we've had I, I've been very very pleased and impressed with the officiating this year. I think that um, they've got a tough job, uh, especially with some of the emphasis on hand check and things that they've done this year. It makes it very difficult on the officials, but I think the officials have done a very good job, uh, and certainly in the games we played, of allowing the game to, to get into a flow. And, you know, they'll tell you before the game how, how they expect it to go and what they want you to do, and, and they're very good about talking to the kids during the game to let the kids know, you know, this is, this is crossing the line, you need to stay here, but that's a good um, idea because you, it, if you let the kids know where you're coming from as a rap, they're going to understand it a little bit better too. And if they stay consistent on their calls, which uh, again, uh, I think they've done a really, a really good job of that. I've been uh, been very pleased with the officiating. Talk about, if you will, uh, your coaching staff, your assistant coaches, and guys helping you run this uh, Bears team. It's not easy to keep <laughs> up with all these Bears. Well, Kendall May is uh, our assistant coach, and uh, Kendall happens to be here tonight, so uh, uh, you know I'm glad that he was able to make it. Kendall, uh, Kendall basically structures our offense for us and, and uh, does a remarkable job with with the kids uh, we don't we don't run plays we run sets uh, we you know we give them an opportunity to make good decisions and uh, give them some some things that they can do to make the you know to give them choices so they can make good decisions but um, he does Kendall does a great job of uh, working with the kids on that and uh, and of course on the bench uh, he and I you know work pretty close hand in hand on how we're going to substitute and, and who but I, I like the fact that Kendall is is, is tuned in and is pulling the pulling the subs up and, and saying what do you think we do this and, and gives us uh, I think we got a great mix uh, out there um, and and uh, we got a couple guys that help us out from time to time uh, L A helps us out a little bit uh, and uh, having him over there is great again it, it relates with the kids real well Super, yeah. and uh, and uh, they like him a lot and uh, so that works out good Bryce Wyatt Wyatt is another kid that has helped us out a lot this year just uh, coming to the practices helping us run some drills and. Uh, uh, His you know, name sounds a little kids. bit for me. Is he a local kid? Well, uh, from Dudley, yes. I and that uh, name was it. That's yeah, and had, had a brother that played over yeah, at Dudley. Yeah. Yes, he was, his brother was a real good player. Yes, he was. I uh, ended up, uh, went to the Naval Academy. I thought so. Now we're talking yeah. business. Bruce yeah. Wyatt's name rang a bell. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And his brother went to the Naval He was the yeah. guard that played point guard for Dudley for some Correct. Correct. Outstanding young yep. player. Bryce played, I think, maybe a little uh, some at Western Guilford was his locale. Good ball player. Uh, went over to Dudley, yeah. Yeah, and, and a great guy. Just a, just a great guy. And again, the kids love him. Oh, Love yeah, L.A. and yeah, Bryce 
both yeah, from having guys around. Yeah, young can uh, relate to the guys too. That's true, uh, and it makes it makes it really good for uh, you know for them. I remember what Bryce White's brother's first name was. We have to look that up. And I know he was over at Dudley, and their father might have been a doctor. Maybe I may be wrong. Might have been a medical professor or something mm -hmm. near there. He might have been like a surgeon of some sort. But this is a very intelligent family, and so Bryce White is helping you out. Yes, What's he doing now? As far as other goes, is he in college also? I think he's uh, finishing some things up, and I'm not sure where you know where he's headed to. And I, I'd love for him to be around a little bit longer because uh, having him on the program is uh, is an outstanding. That's good thing. having him, L.A. yourself, and your other assistant. Yeah, and I, and also I'll, I'll mention our, our athletic director, Phil Tockman. He does uh, a good job. Phil is uh, Phil is remarkable. He's done so many wonderful things for us uh, individually with our with our kids, uh, helping them, and and uh, also uh, just the things that he's helped us to do to structure uh, some of the defense that we play and how we play it. Uh, he's been he's been terrific for the school for us, uh, you know, and uh, for the kids. It takes a lot. You got to have that leadership, and I know he's added a few sports over the years and still growing. Yeah, we have. Um, with our goal, our initial goal was to make sure we had a boys and a girls sport for each season, mm -hmm. which we now have. And um, our our next step, uh, hopefully next year, we're going to be in the state association, which is our which is our goal right now. And then uh, That's beyond the that, schools association. correct. Gotcha. And then next, right after that, uh, would be to get into a conference. And uh, so and and that's what Phil's working on is, you know, communicating with the different conferences and uh, seeing if there's a fit for us and where that fit might be and uh, uh, getting that all done. And since you were doing that, Kimmy, thinking about Bryce White. I think his brother was Brendan White. Brendan, was Brendan, yes, that's correct. I had to get that name in the next <laughs> couple of minutes or I was going to be him had to get some wall. Let's go back to a name we need to really focus on. Basketball on focus, James Ribshack, the court report for a Thursday. Let's go back to a name uh, we need to look back on and talk about going back toward Josh Level. About a year ago now, is when he passed away during one of your games That's over Winston-Salem. And it was just a huge loss and had a major, major impact on the entire community, not only the basketball community, but the entire community when Josh passed away. I think it was on a Thursday night, was it? Wednesday it was. Night? It was a game over at uh, Quality Education. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a shock uh, to everybody, to, to our school uh, and certainly to the community at large and to everybody who knew Josh. Josh was uh, a remarkable, very remarkable young man. Um, we had him for such a short time at New Garden Friends, but he was uh, he was in a place that that he wanted to be. He he wanted to come back to Greensboro, wanted to to be with his with his best friend Kanayo, and uh, they had the opportunity to play together for a while. Uh, and uh, it was he was he was I, I can't say enough about him, and at the same time his family, a remarkable group of people, just wonderful people uh, across the board. Uh, his brothers and sisters, his parents are, are just uh, they're terrific. Folks and uh, Josh was he he was a gift to the school for a short time, but he left a, he left an uh, an impact uh, and an impression on everyone over there. Uh, in in that short time he was there, he uh, he made it clear when he came that uh, one of the things that was important to him was he wanted to be part of the student community. He want, he didn't want everybody to see him as a basketball player. He wanted everybody to see him as as a student and and as uh, as the person that he was. Uh, he could make everybody laugh uh, always had a smile on his face and uh, never never did I hear him have an unkind word about anybody he was uh, he was a very positive very positive person and uh, again uh, it was just such a such a loss to, to all of us yeah, he came from a very large family very big family yes yeah. still every kid in that family reading about them after Josh passed away and mm -hmm. having known his dad a little bit his dad's been with us a couple of times on this show over the past few years yep Joseph level but uh, reading about Josh and the family every kid in that family was almost like a piece of a puzzle. They all had true. a certain personality. Each kid fit in a certain role in that family, the Level family. That that is true, and, and uh, they they were and, and every one of them uh, when you when you meet them, they're just they're just such good people and such uh, such pleasant people to be around. And Joe, uh, I, I'm very proud to say Joe is a friend of mine. Uh, I think he's uh, he's one of one of the strongest family men I've ever met, uh, mm -hmm. and just a, just a good all around person. And there's going to be, and we'll talk to uh, Kanaya more about this. There's going to be a a Josh Level uh, benefit basketball game. Going to get an all-star basketball That's game correct. coming up, end of your season, and Kanai is going to, he's coordinating all he, that, bringing that together. He is putting that together, and I, and I definitely want him to talk about that, sure. but it's uh, its something that he that he wanted to do, and uh, and 
uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of kids, uh, you know, are going to step in and, and uh, be part of that. So it'll it'll be something that everybody will enjoy. I'm sure. Dave Secor with us at Shane's Rib Shack, the uh, basketball focus show, the court report for a Thursday. Before Dave steps out and Kanaya steps in, how did you become a basketball coach? How did you get into basketball? How did you become a coach? <laughs> it's an interesting story. I uh, I went to college to to uh, be a teacher and a coach. That was my goal. That's the right thing. You, and, you uh, took the approach to become a coach. And, and I graduated in uh, 72 from NC State and um, unfortunately or fortunately at that time I was working part time for a little transportation company called UPS and they offered me full time employment and I couldn't turn it down and so for 35 years that's what I did. Uh, when I finished my, my two sons were just getting ready to go into high school and uh, I had them at New Garden Friends. They, they're lifetimers there. They were for, uh, K through 12 and I was started attending their games and I actually asked uh, Daryl Cotton, the uh, upper school head, who was also coaching, if I could be of any help to him. And um, after a couple of years of being an assistant, he asked me if I would take over the program and I was more than happy to do that. And uh, I, I love the game um, and I love the kids and, and uh, being part of it is, uh, it's been it's been a gift to me. Uh, it's it really definitely has, something yeah. you love to do because even after your sons have moved on, you stay with the program. That's the key sometimes to uh, see what it, happens yeah. with the person that gets involved after they don't have a direct family or a relative attachment. You're still completely and totally attached to this team. And, and, I will, and I'll say that uh, is entirely because of the school. Um, I, it's a place that I believe in. It's a, it's a great community. And uh, it, it's good for the kids. And uh, I like the people over there. I think that they're dedicated, hardworking, and and, and terrific educators, and so it's a great environment, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to see any any kid come into that environment, and an opportunity to help them along the way to uh, to you know to help them with uh, getting better at basketball, to you know getting better as being human beings and people. Uh, one last thing I'll say is that um, we take that as a serious responsibility, is to help kids understand that there comes a day when uh, when they won't be playing basketball and they have to be adults, and uh, they have to they have to live in a world and uh, we try to help them with uh, things like that, that, making decisions, understanding that it doesn't always go your way, it's not always fair, but uh, you pick yourself up and you get right back in the game. And if you teach them well and get a good job, have a good vocation, good work going, they do well for the family, provide they can always play basketball on the weekends. There you go. Uh, you uh, that's, the that's, something that, the weekends, yeah. that's something that never goes away. You can always put a goal up in the driveway and, and shoot hoops. And there's <laughs> courts all over town you drive around. I mean, we could go down the street here now, go down all the way down that stop, like go past Grimms right. and make a left, go down to Lake Daniels Court. If you're yes, you really could. inclined, you got a ball in the car, you really love your game, you can shoot a few tonight. And, and, I, can, and I can tell you that I have been on that court myself many times. Many times. Uh, Did you grow up here in this town? I actually grew up uh, a little bit north of Raleigh, but I've, I've been in Greensboro since the uh, middle 70s. Yeah, because you used to be a big uh, radio addict back in your day, too, back uh, in the old, old days. Yeah. <laughs> Caught several of those. I'm sure probably be in the... Uh, I, used to, I used to call in to your radio station yeah, a lot. The UPS, man. I mean, yeah. Delivery people, they have to listen radio yeah uh, sometimes, sometimes so and it, and, yeah. uh, and I worked uh, I worked inside and yeah, uh, exactly and I worked different shifts but I used to listen to uh, to the old WKW when you were on there Good and uh, I was uh, I was a I was a great great fan of that radio station uh, they used to Dusty Dunn used to get mad at me for answering all these trivia <laughs> questions you, <tore> him up. <laughs> you probably <laughs> own the hinky pinky in those, I got a lot of that stuff yeah. yes you did yes well listen let's let you move out let uh, can I move in thank you super job thank enjoyed you enjoyed it and gonna have some more fun tonight too, Kanayo. Okay. Obi Rapu Jr. coming in. Dave Secor heading out. He'll give the guys their meal cards over there too. They'll get their meal here tonight. So, Kanayo up next.